Okay, so that is the police. Is she is she coming already? I think uh, that is the police right now. I think uh, the Kamala Harris she'll be landing at this point so the police is already getting the place uh, ready for that action uh, I need to find a place to park this car so that I can follow and then uh, give you the, the I mean the, the, the atmosphere of what is gonna happen here in Cape Coast whilst we wait for uh, the Vice President of the United States of America coming into uh, Ghana, Cape Coast to be precise. I've seen the police cars, you know, with the siren thing moving here and there. So I need to park this car and then walk to see what exactly is going on. So uh, we had it in the news that the, the Vice President of the United States, she's, she's a female. Yeah, she's coming to the motherland uh, for a week long visit. And I happen to be in, in Cape Coast where she'll be visiting uh, from Accra. So I'm going to go to where her plane will be landing. Echo, echo, echo city. Just landed here in Cape Coast. <laughs> <laughs> Kamala Harris, uh, the Vice President of United States, just landed in my city, Cape Coast. You know, uh, he, she's in Ghana for a one-week uh, visitation tour. Yes, so enjoy it. I'll bring you more from the atmosphere here in Cape Coast. <laughs> a bye. You see the Macas? Say sure, again, what salute to? Then they did it, it's right.
So that is the entourage from the um, from the the point where the 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 plane landed, the helicopter landed. So this is it. Feel the atmosphere here. This is Cape Coast. So we have a bunch of cars, a fleet of cars. Yes. Bye. I'm waving at those who just got here. Look at the security from the United States. So they brought their own cars to Ghana. Wow, that's pretty cool. I'm wondering if my president goes to the United States, this is how they're going to treat him. <laughs> I'm wondering anyway. But uh, this is United States we're talking about. This is hilarious. I mean, most places were closed. This is the bus shop. They put this red thing there. The buses shouldn't move because the vice president is coming to coming to Cape Coast. Well, ah, uh, there's a different perspective when it comes to such things. Somebody will be would have a different perspective as to, oh, this is good. I mean, he's she's coming. There's going to be more networking and blah 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 blah. Someone is also saying, like the man was saying, um, there was no need for this. Anyway, look, the whole place is blocked. Seriously, the whole place, Cape Coast is blocked because a vice president is in Ghana. And from where the plane landed over there to where she's going to meet the Oman Hin or the paramount chief of Cape Coast or Ogwa and then also visit the Cape Coast castle, it's like 30 minutes walk. So my friends and I, yeah, we, yeah. Are, we are walking yeah. because yeah. the vice president of USA is here and, vice and, president of the States is and they've blocked the all the roads. Cars are not moving, cars are not coming. My sisters are walking, they just close from work. This is crazy, yeah. but yeah. like I said, it is. It, is what it, is. it is what it is. So I'm coming your way with just, you know, the environment, what, what people are saying about she being in Cape Coast and them blocking the roads. I'm not being negative, but I think certain things shouldn't be done. So, so now I'm gonna walk to where I'm going to. Yomi, are you walking from where to where? And why are you not picking car? <laughs> because. And it is the turn of the second gentleman. 
So. to have a glimpse of uh, um, the Vice President of the United States. And they are not even getting it because the police is not allowing us to even get closer to the castle. Like security is kind of like, you know, way different. A call Simpson, connecting Africans in the diaspora to the motherland. Many situations, odds that were designed to break them, to demoralize them, to cre create and, uh, its systems and situations that were to make them feel like less than humans, less than full human beings. But yet they survived. And they tell another history a history of endurance, a history of faith, a history in believing what is possible, a history not only that tells about the ability that each individual has to survive but to thrive. And so all these stories must be told. All these stories must be told in a way that we take from this place, the pain we all feel, the anguish that reeks from this place. And we then carry the knowledge that we have may gained here toward the work that we do in lifting up all people, in recognizing the struggles of all people of fighting for, as the walls of this place talk about, justice and freedom for all people, human rights for all people. So that's what I take from being here. The descendants of the people who walked through 
that door were strong people, proud people, people of deep faith, people who loved their families, their traditions, their culture, and carried that innate being with